Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. Partner cheated the entire relationship, and it hurts that he doesn't want to fix it. How do I let it go? My partner, 32M, and I, 29F, split up two weeks ago after being together for a year and a half. Throughout the relationship, there were several red flags. He didn't want to call me his girlfriend, didn't like it when I posted his face on social media, chatted up multiple women as he tried to start a business on day game and pick up culture, wrote in his notes, afraid of STD, choose sex partners wisely, bought a new box of condoms and have six missing condoms, suggested marriage but couldn't give concrete details, couldn't properly empathize with my insecurity, I terminated things with him many times the most recent of which I saw him bringing home another lady three days later. We had formally broken up at that point. So I let it go, and we decided to try to mend our relationship. But two weeks ago, I had a nagging sensation that something was wrong. True, I discovered two condoms in his suitcase. He said they've always been there, which they weren't when I looked a week ago, and that they're a protection, against what? I'm not sure. We don't use condoms. I was going to let it go until I discovered a hotel receipt. He attempted to justify it by saying it was just another business concept, but I couldn't deceive myself any longer. I observed his WhatsApp chats, which included Friday night drinks with a lady and another woman asking if he was available that night, to which he said no. For years, he has also been cold messaging random women on Instagram and Facebook. I contacted the lady I discovered he went on a date with after we met and she stated he was suspicious and insisted on taking her home with him. When I talked with his ex-girlfriend, she verified that he had cheated on her as well and that he had deep-seated problems that may never be resolved. She also said that he had been reaching out to her the whole time we were together. I chatted with my colleague. He acknowledged to chatting to other females when things were tough, but he said he never slept with anybody else. He stated our relationship became difficult, and I agree but my uneasiness was caused by symptoms of adultery, which I now know were accurate. He also said that he has commitment difficulties and must address them on his own since he does not want to harm me any longer. Therefore, he ended our relationship. I spent the previous two weeks pleading with him to let us work together to resolve the difficulties. No, he responded, it's something he has to accomplish on his own. But he's been checking in every day for the past two weeks, saying he wants to help me get over it. I'd warned him that going no contact would be like tearing out a and letting me bleed to death. I planned to stop communicating with him two days ago in order to move on, but he managed to contact me to beg for assistance with his job. He relies heavily on me for his work, but we not co-workers. He said that this would be the last time he uses fiber to locate someone. I gave in, so now I'm waiting for him to text me about his job before I try not to contact him again. I know he doesn't deserve anything from me anymore, but I can't bring myself to abandon someone, whether it's him or someone else, when I can assist. I know my ex-partner is severely damaged, and to be honest, I know it will take years, if ever, for him to be a better guy, and our relationship is beyond mending in this lifetime. But I'm still torn between wanting to sacrifice everything to heal the relationship and knowing that I need to let it go for my own sake. I'm in therapy because of the anxiety this connection has brought me. I realize the relationship was short-lived and that I'm still young, but the betrayals hurt to the core of my being. It wasn't just one incident. I believe the whole relationship was a sham and he never genuinely loved me, but there were so many great times. I nearly moved in with him and I felt our aims were similar, marriage, children, plans to move abroad, etc. Do you have any suggestions for reconciling the two sides of the relationship and actually moving on? Can someone who has gone through something similar assure me that I will make it through this? Because of this, my self-esteem and faith in other people have been broken. I was previously engaged and it ended because he cheated as well. Story 2. Roommate 23, male triggers me 23 male, mentions of X24 female, my roommate, and I have a really strange connection. We're both FWB. We're closer than that at times because of the more private conversations we have with each other. But neither of us wants it to be Ariel official relationship. I met him on the internet when I needed to transfer flats, 
and I thought that since he appeared so pleasant at the time, I'd rather live with him than with another random stranger, because at least we had some interests in common. We have both split up with past partners, and although he can talk about his, I don't want him to bring up mine. He's also in touch with my ex. I'm in touch with her as well, but I haven't seen her in two weeks, and they met without me yesterday, which made me depressed and on the verge of committing suicide. Yes, I'm in therapy. No, it hasn't been that awful for months, I'm not sure what occurred. Hearing about her, what she said to him about me, what's going on in her life, keeps triggering me. If she wants to tell me such things, I'd rather hear them from her than from him. I'm supposed to be in a casual relationship with my ex right now, but I don't believe this is really accurate. She messages me every day every few days and sounds upbeat about it, but it bothers me that she doesn't really initiate meetings on her own, and I'm wondering if there won't come a point when I tell her I don't want it anymore. Basically, I don't want to hear about my ex from him, and when I informed him, he became defensive and stated that I'm limiting his freedom of speech in some way related to his trauma and that he'll continue to do so or he'll remove himself from me. In response, I warned him that if he continues to do such things, I would just ignore it, ignore slash end the discussion and go. Is there anything more you want to do? Do I need to pack my belongings and go soon? It's almost as if I warn him not to do something because it makes me uncomfortable and he has a double standard when it comes to such things. We may have a wonderful relationship for a few days. Then something triggers me and I respond emotionally, I have BPD, so I decided to speak about it. But I never know what approach to take since he sometimes tells me it's alright and sometimes tells me I'm draining and even shouted at me. I wish I could live here in peace. Is it necessary for me to disengage in some wastery 3? I F19. Can't get along with anybody. I feel very uninterested in everybody. I have a difficult time getting along with others. I'd never be able to. In my 12 years of schooling, I only made two pals. We're still great friends. To be honest, I don't need friends since I already have them, but I'd want to learn to stand people so that I can make my life a little simpler. It's not like I can't communicate. I do, and I make every effort to seem as interested in them as they are in me. But I'm afraid I won't be able to accomplish it. I push myself to pay attention to them. I know it seems cruel, but I only ask people questions about themselves so that they may ask me questions in return. I like conversations about myself, my dislikes and loves, my experiences and my life. And, out of politeness, I have to question them about themselves, which puts me under a lot of strain. I can't seem to concentrate. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. I despise listening to people speak about themselves. It was okay in high school, but in college I come off as harsh and unpleasant, which is not the case since I always make a point of not showing how nervous or indifferent I am. People at college used to like me, but now they despise me. I'm at a loss as to why. What can I do to pique the attention of others? I've tried faking, but it doesn't seem to be working. Is it better if I simply quit bothering? I'm concerned if I don't act now, this will come back to bite me in my professional life.